for this session, um, if you have any questions relating to what was covered or things which have not been covered, uh, you are free to, to uh, ask the panel members. You can direct it to any one of the panel members or if you want to hear maybe different viewpoints, you can direct to everyone except me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, first of all, let me, let me just pose the first questions because I don't see any hands coming up. Um, I was um, actually quite encouraged by the fact, uh, Ms. Jude, the Korean government has a cloud-first policy, all right, which is uh, actually not that common uh, around this region, I know that US and certain parts of Europe, Australia are moving to that direction. Um, so, I would like to ask Ms. Ju as well as our other speakers, how did the idea of first cloud first policy? Uh, what what is behind you know what is behind the cloud first policy? And, and whether there are any major challenges in implementing a cloud-first policy. Okay? Maybe we'll let you answer first, yeah. Computer呃，呃，呃，呃，呃，呃，呃，呃，呃，呃，呃，呃，呃，呃，呃，呃，呃，呃，呃，呃，呃，呃，呃，呃，呃，呃，呃，呃，呃，呃，呃，呃，
Okay, in Singapore itself, we don't have a cloud-first policy as well. I think, like I mentioned in the slides, what we're trying to actually, yep, sorry, what we're actually trying to do is to uh, make the market a bit more vibrant. We're trying to bring out more providers, um, and in appropriate time, we'll actually consider whether that's something that we actually want to put in place. Uh, but for now, no, we don't have a cloud-first policy. All right, so it's uh, Korea that's. Uh you know, leading the way today. Uh, any questions from the floor? Anyone? Hi. Um, obviously, um, cloud, going cloud uh, for n kind of non-sensitive uh, data um, services is, is a, a great step um, forward, especially from resiliency and, 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 and the details you mentioned earlier. But what steps do you feel need to take place to enable uh, more like financial services or more sensitive data to be able to be hosted on the cloud um, from a government perspective? You're, you're talking about generally? Generally. Generally yeah. for non... Yeah, for uh, adoption of, uh, more, adoption sensitive of more sensitive data. data. Yeah, yeah. Exactly, Do you want to take that first? Yeah. Yes. Um, as a good question, first of all, yes, the well, majority of uh, our services most likely will be non-sensitive data. But also, we also crafting out the sensitive data as well. We're not probably specialize in budgeting bureau or a DOD, but we have a storage or a cloud spaces for them if they needed it. Most majority of them are having their own cloud on premise since they are very sensitive data. But nonetheless, we also provide them if they needed it for we crafting for those as well. I think for in Singapore's context itself, um, like we have the for Singapore's context itself, we have the uh, public, we have adopted both the public cloud as well as our private cloud as well. So, uh, and we've just basically started in terms of doing the interfacing between the two um, for data transfer between the two and so on. Um, so we're always looking, and I think in terms of the public cloud providers, they are also evolving in terms of their security posture and so on. So that's something that we're looking at. But uh, at this point in time, not, not quite yet. I think one of the things uh, that we need to see a little bit more of is also transparency um, in terms of the public cloud. A lot of those things in the public cloud today um, for the government's level of security that's required is actually a black box. So those are some of the things that we need to probably work through or might evolve over time. Hanguka天,경우에는,一旦저희는プライベートクラウド입니다.이제パブリッククラウドを使用하고 와 데이터 그 가용성 이런 측면들을 고려해서 네 가지 레벨로 구분을 하는데 음 하이 레벨의 등급보다는 아 로어 레벨의 그런 웹사이트라든지 이제 그런 레벨의 업무를 먼저 클라우드로 시작을 했고요. 어 지속적으로 이제 클라우드 기술이나 서비스의 안정성이 검증된 이후에 지속적으로 이제 하이어 레벨의 업무까지도 클라우드를 적용을 할 계획에 있습니다. In Korean case, uh, we don't operate the public cloud. It's actually the private cloud exclusively for the government. So we classify the government data as four different categories according to those sensitivities and data availability. So we start from the low uh, level of sensitive uh, data so and, and then gradually move on to the um, higher level of sensitivity and um, we conduct also the ISP yes so um, as a result we draw a result that um, not 100% of the data would be more suitable for the uh, cloud so in our uh, government strategy is um, 
try to convert 60% of our total e-government service, as she explained in her presentation, until 2017 by uh, introducing 50% of open source software, and that way we could reduce down the 40% of our operating budget. That's our 654 strategy. Thank you. Any, any other questions? Let me, let, me, let me ask one. Um, we've heard from everyone, you know, the, um, the adoption of um, uh, uh, cloud uh, by, by government agencies and <clears throat> migrating to the cloud. So, did you use a stick or a carrot approach, you know, to have the uh, agencies, uh, those who are, you know, currently you know, owning their own data center or yeah, uh, running their own uh, system. Uh, what, what has been the approach of the, uh, of the government uh, in encouraging you know, agencies, government ministries to move to the cloud? Uh, for Thailand, when we started in 2012, we actually uh, volunteer. We asked for the volunteer for the government in agency in 2012 because uh, b back then it was really early age of the cloud uh, computing system. So there, uh, there were actually 15 agency that in uh, volunteer program with us, and. S then it increased rapidly from 15 to 30, 30 to 90. It's like double and triple. And people start seeing the benefit. And the government see that it reducing costs and other benefit that you heard today all day. And, and just now people just getting realized and now just become their first thing, think of a, the using G Cloud now, not is automatically they will ask for G Cloud when they do anything. So I think it's showing to them that it works and it's really been uh, beneficial not just only for the government agency but to their services to the citizen as well. Mm. So there's a great change in attitude towards moving Correct. to the cloud. It was hard in the mm. first, but then you know people start seeing it's the real thing. They can see the benefit. So that's good. I think when we launched cloud around 2012 as well, um, one of the things that we did is we did a lot of end user education, um, a lot of road shows, and I think that was very important. Um, we started off doing it actually in terms of uh, quarterly, then we even went down to monthly, uh, so that basically the awareness of agencies in terms of how they could use the cloud, how would they onboard the cloud, what would be different to them, uh, these things were very, very then becomes apparent to them. Um, I think in terms of engagement, uh, we didn't only engage the uh, agencies, but we also engage industry. Because a lot of systems are developed for government agencies by industry players. So basically, there was a fair amount of engagement done at the industry level as well in terms of what is G Cloud, how do you build systems on top of G Cloud, and so on. Um, so all of these things actually help. Um, towards the end of 2014, there was actually where we have a legacy environment where there's a lot of agencies hosting. So that came to a natural end of life. So um, because, because uh, that of this awareness that had actually gone out, so agencies, a lot of the agencies actually migrated to G Cloud uh, during that point of time as well. So that's where a lot of the G Cloud, today the G Cloud customers have actually come from. Yeah. So I guess yeah, that's how we did it. 어, 한국에서는 클라우드 도입이 정부 기관 시스템의 노후된 시스템을 교체하는 시점에서 이제 클라우드로 적용을 하게 됩니다. 근데 이제 노후 시스템을 교체하는 예산이 어, 기관마다 아주 부족하기 때문에 클라우드로의 전환은 선택이 아니라 음, 그것 클라우드로밖에 할수 없는 에, 그런 거고요. 특별히 클라우드로 전환하기 어려운 시스템들 어, 고가용성이 요구된다든지 특정 하드웨어의 종속적이라든지 소프트웨어 종속적인 그런 시스템들을 제외하고는 
우선적으로 클라우드를 먼저 적용을 하고 있고요. 대신에 어떤 기술적인 어, 클라우드라든지 공개 소프트웨어에 대한 기술 지원 그리고 이제 안정적인 운영을 위한 뭐 이중화 구성이라든지 이런 부분들을 저희 센터가 지원을 하고 있습니다. Actually, the introduction uh, period of a cloud in Korean government is uh, pretty much similar. In those uh, periods, we need to um, change the old, old devices. So they are finished uh, the, their lifespan. So, um, and plus, there's a pretty much lack of those budget allocated for changing those old device. So actually, in Korean case, um, the cloud, the conversion is not an option anymore. It could be the must. Uh, so especially for those um, services which is um, dependent on the specific hardware or software or which needs the high availability except those services, we um, encourage more of those uh, services to be converted into cloud based and also we support um, the open source, the uh, technical support. We directly operate the support center. And also we support those uh, uh, double, the backup uh, configurations. And those are the technical services that we support. So for in Korea, I guess, is a more directive approach. Yeah? You have the muscle <laughs> to, to enforce this. Okay, um, we have five more minutes um, before we have to uh, quit. Any, any questions? Yes, there's a hand there. So, um, after convincing the government to migrate into the, uh, into, the into the cloud, how do you convince them that their information should be integrated together? The information is? Should be integrated, like, um, should be consolidated. Oh. It says once it's migrated to the cloud, uh, how do you convince them that the information is in, still integrated? Yeah. It's a good question, actually. <laughs> to ask them to use G Cloud is probably the easiest way, but having them trusting us to put their data into our G Cloud is the toughest one. I think that's the toughest job that we ever ha have done because they might just want G Cloud to do something like web hosting or something that just sim um, basically uh, easily. But putting their data, that means they have to trust us because uh, they have to make sure that our system can uh, host their data and without leaking their data or there's some security parameter that we are uh, considered for them. So those, like I said, we have to be able to build the trust. We want to make sure that we never have any incident that's showing to them that their data will be safely with us. So since 2012 until now, we haven't had uh, any incident in our G Cloud to actually, uh, so, Basically, they trust us that they can put their data with us and they can use it and also they can share it to become a consolidation or integrating with other agency. Because uh, you know, some of the database that they, uh, one agency use may be used or can be used with another agencies. And those are the thing actually we are want, we, we the government agency or the central government agency like this, we want that to happen, integrated not just using GCAL for their own agency, but we want to, like you say, consolidate it and be able to use those data with other agency. So that's, the, that's a good question. I think in Singapore itself, um, basically, um, we have, in those agency briefings that I mentioned earlier on, we've actually been very transparent uh, to the agencies in terms of actually informing them what's the security model, for example, in GCloud. What are their security responsibilities and what are the responsibilities of the service provider? Um, in there itself, that's where agencies actually then make a choice. GCloud is a choice for them. It's not compulsory. That's why it's not cloud first. Per se. It's a choice. They come in with basically after assessing, there's G Cloud, whether it's hosting model, security model, data protection model, I think that you touched on. Uh, does that actually suit their needs? So is it fit for their purpose? If it's fit for their purpose, then they actually opt to host their systems on G Cloud. 
that, that's interesting because most people think of Singapore as, you know, a lot more directive. Uh, you must, <laughs> yeah. 2005년에 저희 통합 센터가 처음 만들어졌을 때그 그 당시 이제 각그 정부 기관들이 개별적으로 그 데이터 센터 혹은 전산실을 유지를 했었습니다. 처음에 이런 센터가 만들어진다고 했을 때 기관들의 저항이 엄청나게 컸음에도 불구하고 정부가 강력하게 그 부분은 그 동안의 그런 자원의 비효율성이라든지 예산의 비효율성 특히나 이제 보안적인 측면에서 어, 통합 운영이 필요하다라는 결정을 내리고 강력하게 리딩을 한 결과 어, 한 10년 정도 데이터 센터를 운영을 하게 되었고요. 어, 데이터 센터를 운영하면서 어, 기존에는 코 로케이션부터 시작하고 단계적으로 IT 콘솔리데이션 어, 이런 과정을 점차적으로 좀 진행을 하게 되었습니다. Um, actually, we government as a government data center, uh, we are celebrating our 10th anniversary this year. It has been 10 years since 2005. And before 2005, all those information systems of government service has been managed by each individual ministry, or there are each uh, individual computer rooms. Um, and of course, as you can imagine, there are pretty much amount of resistance happens, like people quarrel each other, they don't like the idea of integration because they thought that's uh, just they are deprived of their own resources and own budget and own people own technology. But um, in the Korean case, uh, the government, actually the president at that time, uh, were really committed. He has a like, strong leadership, so he's really committed uh, for this project to be um, uh, launched in his own term uh, because they can see even though they like keep insisting uh, they want to keep their own but still they can see the inefficiency of uh, 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 resource usage and also the budget the waste so and especially um, the security area the information security area was like um, almost none of security system for the data the back in data. So people uh, doesn't really <laughs> have like enough logic to like insist their own. So um, in our case, we could say the strong leadership of government and starting from the co-location and um, consolidation of hardware and like moving forward and um, step by step. So in our case, the strong leadership from the government and the leadership. Thank you. Um Early on, I think we, we lost about 10 minutes uh, because of the late finish. Um, maybe we could have just one more question. Uh, if I may ask the next session chairman, Robert, can we have another five minutes? Thank you. <laughs> 10 minutes. <laughs> I don't think we can last 10 minutes. But, uh, any, any more questions? Uh, good afternoon. Uh, we heard a lot about cloud and everyone migrating to the cloud, but can we hear some instances of, uh, there could be some challenges while migrating to the cloud in terms of business continuity planning when you're migrating from the existing system to the cloud. So how was that taken care of uh, in each of the cases for Singapore, Thailand, and Korea? To catch that question. Uh, sorry, we... <laughs> We, we didn't quite hear that question. Can you yeah. so speak a bit slower? Yeah. Yeah, Go ahead. This, the question is regarding migration of the cloud to the cloud from the existing uh, uh, in-house systems or the legacy systems. Mm -hmm. So what were the challenges that uh, each of the countries faced while migrating to the cloud, uh, especially in terms of business continuity planning? Because when you're migrating from one system to the other, uh, there is a possibility there could be some sort of uh, discontinuation, you know, in the business. So, how was that managed? Mm. So, really, the challenges of migrating from existing non-cloud to to cloud-based. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure there's a lot. Oh, okay. The the challenges. I don't think is a technical stuff. I think technical is easily. Uh, it's not easily done, but it actually uh, as, as step. You know, but the only thing that I see when when we started it was the challenges is understanding. 
And be, most of the people don't understand really what, what is cloud services or, or how they can utilize the services from us. So for us, it's very difficult to really promoting the G Cloud to all the government agency. So those are the biggest one, not the technical stuff, but that's some, they have to understand first. Once they understand, they can buy it, they, then they will come, you know. So uh, that's the one key for us. Yeah, I think um, one of the challenges that we actually had is the practices that people actually have when they come in, right? So when the practices that they actually have, building systems in the physical world, and when they try and build it in the cloud, especially like you talked about BCP, uh, in terms of resiliency. Um, one example, a lot of people uh, do clustering in a certain manner in the physical world. You put a physical nick and so on. But then when they try and bring the same model into the cloud, it doesn't quite work. It's not supposed to work that way. So some of these things are, are about awareness, but it's about practices also. Um, how, do you, how do you redesign or redevelop or, or adjust your system such that it's more optimal in cloud versus uh, from the physical world and not just shift and lift it? Yeah. The systems are mostly Unix, Unix, 고가의 소프트웨어들을 사용을 하고 있었습니다. 그러다 보니까 운영비가 아주 많이 드는 이제 구조였죠. 예. 그러다 보니까 저희는 이제 그런 운영 비용을 절감하기 위해서 이제 클라우드를 도입한 목적도 있었고요. 어, 그런 이제 기존에 쓰던 그런 DBMS나 UNIX 머신 이런 것 대신에 X86 서버 그리고 공개 소프트웨어 DBMS로 전환하는 데 있어서 기관들이 아주 초기에는 아주 많이 불안해 했었습니다. 그래서 왜 클라우드로 해야 되는지에 대해서 어좀 예, 좀 저항도 없지 않아 있었는데 일단 저희 센터는 아까도 설명드렸지만은 아주 로 1단계는 로우 레벨의 업무부터 접, 음, 클라우드를 접목을 시켰습니다. 그런 것들을 이제 기관들이 체감하면서 아 클라우드로 전환해도 기존 시스템과 크게 다를 바가 없구나라는 것들을 인지하면서부터는 점차 조금 더 적극적으로 클라우드 전환에 임해 주셨던 것 같습니다. Actually, the system, the legacy system that um, our clients used before cloud was uh, mostly like Unix system or the expensive ones. So one of the key concerns that we um, had in our mind is to reduce down those OPEX. So a saving budget is one of the, uh, the most uh, important and um, the government uh, uh, had to consider. So those um, DBMS and uh, Unix machine, which cost a lot, um, but um, in the very initial stage, of course, people were not really uh, trust us, and they got a bit nervous about our service um, availability or capability. But um, as time goes by, they can see uh, what we can provide us, and that we are not um, trying or forcing them in all one at once. Okay, you should do this. We start from the pilot project, consists of like um, less than five ministry, and so that we can show them. Okay, this is the, what we can do, and this is what you can prepare in advance. Also, we provide them as a uh, provide the guidelines as a booklet. So the people can understand in more um, comprehensive way, so that they can teach their own uh, IT staff in the organization, so that they a bit less worry about all those new introduction, new technology. Okay, I see that our extra quarter is dried up, so uh, unfortunately we have to close this session and let the next panel uh, take over. So on behalf. So can you join me in thanking our speakers?